What up, y'all? It's your boy Benji Burke again, back with Benjamin's and Business Podcast Show. We got a crazy guest on today, none other than Roy Johnson, the infamous leader of Bishop Sycamore High School. I know y'all got you guys saw it uh, on HBO documentary. We're gonna dive in and get some of these questions answered that most of you guys probably want to know. Had questions after the documentary and so forth. What's up, man? How are you? Benji, what's going on, man? I really appreciate you having me here, man. Come on, man. We 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 got to dive into some stuff, man. What in the hell is wrong with you, bro? <laughs> Listen, man. If somebody can answer that question, man, they would be uh, they would be the author of the DSM five six, the fifth or the sixth edition. I think they're on the sixth, the fifth edition now. So they would be the author of the DSM five, uh, DSM six. Okay. Okay. So take us back. Let's 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 go back. Let's go back to the beginning of how this all started um yeah, day one kind of briefly talk about where, where you began what was your vision and kind of go from there well one of the things that uh you know you don't get to see in a documentary is um you know they talk about my growing up and stuff like that but as far as high school sports are concerned which you'll be able to attest to this i told somebody on facebook i was like you really don't understand that there's like three divisions of high school sports that isn't uh, NCAA or professional. And I was like, what do you mean? I was like, you have regular high schools, right, that you have. Then you have prep schools that have high schoolers and PGs. Mm -hmm. And then you just have straight PGs. Okay. And so one of the biggest issues, as you know, around here is a lot of guys get to that tweener point is what I like to call it, is where they get to that senior year and it's like the recruiting didn't go the way it was supposed to go. Most kids that I know that grow up in the hood don't go to camps. And football's a little bit different. See, basketball, there is a lot of AAU, mm -hmm. right? And so I think the first thing that people need to understand is that the vision behind this was to have uh, an AAU, but that also provided an online school support system. That's the best way to explain it because most people don't understand. When they say prep school, you even got guys that go to straight PG and be like, I went to prep school. Like, bro, you went to a postgraduate program, your military academy, your so on and so forth, mm -hmm. and you play D3s, JVs, and all this. This isn't that. And a lot of people aren't familiar with that. So when you got your Western Reserve Academy that's in Ohio, when you got your Suffield Academy, those big prep schools, I say go to Max Preps. There's a whole section Right. Of Max Prep. So the idea was to start with that and have the church back it. So are there any postgrad schools in Ohio? Of course. Western Reserve Academy. Okay. So that so that was, you know, in the beginning, that's one of the things that we looked at. I don't know how much you're going to get into, you know, how much uh, we talked about it. But that's one of the things that we wanted to get into. Let's look at a Western Reserve Academy type model. Let's look at a... A model like that, your Suffield Academy, like I said, your Deerfield, your Hunt School, right. your Bra uh, your um, Petty School, your Blair Academy. Let's look at that and try to model that, but not necessarily model like that, right? Because their income and their funding is in the hundreds of millions. Let's look at something that's a little bit more um, conducive to the demographics that we were going to recruit from. So you wanted to have a high school with a team. Correct. And then a post grad team also. Right. So and then and so then, almost like Fork Union. Yeah, that's that's a great example, right? That's the guy that I was talking to about. So almost like Fork Union. So Fork Union has a high school. Now whether or not they have fifth year players, and all that I'm not going to get into because we're not going to get into reclassing and all that stuff that we know that happens. But then have a PG later on. You know what I mean? But you know, as that as things went on, I was like, well, there's a lot of schools that have a hybrid model. I know a lot of people are like, what's that? What's a hybrid model? Well, what we found out in research is that you have a Western Reserve Academy, right? Western Reserve Academy has nine through 13, quote unquote. The other schools that name all those, um, Hun School and things like that have So a, the 13 is the post-grad year. Yeah, it's your post-grad year, but they still compete against high school. Okay. Whether people, whether people want to believe it or not, I'm like, just look on Max Preps. Yeah, yeah. That's where we got the idea from. Okay. So when we looked at Western Reserve Academy that had fifth-year players and mm -hmm. they were playing teams in Ohio, we said, hey, let's take a look at OSHA and see how we go about that. So then we went down that avenue and, you know, I stick with my guns on this. I just, OSHA ain't shit. And I was like, this isn't going to work. But when you look in their bylaws, at a bylaw 911, and that's, you know, again, what we've discussed where um, high schools and members, member teams of OSHA 
they have the discretion to play against non-interscholastic teams, which is why you had Columbus Crusaders, Reigning Academy, and club teams playing against high school teams. So you go and look, and you're like, oh, wait a minute. If I have a club team, I can still compete against high school teams? That can't be right. I didn't think it was right. So I went and I asked. They were like, yeah. Then I started researching club teams. And so we took all that information, we got mm -hmm. it together, and then we said, uh, you know what, we're going to work with the church. The church had originally you know, came to us and said, hey, we want to kind of do something in the community. We sat down, like I said, that's a podcast for another, you know, another time, but we're going to sit down and we're going to put this together. And then the problem that we ran into is that and I'm going to be real careful in saying this because I'm still planning on being in the Ohio area for a while, the Columbus, Ohio area. Columbus Crusaders would play Northland, for instance. Northland would wax them. Um, you have uh, your sports rating academy would play Bishop Harley, and they would wax them. And I was like, well, we do something that's a mix of a club team with an online school team with a NCNT homeschool team, we put it all together. Our, my reach went a little bit further and we had guys that could actually play. And I think that one of the mistakes that I made before we even get into that is that we went big. Like I wasn't gonna go play. Right. You had guys that could play, but they weren't IMG level. Or did you have any that was So that? we'll talk about my first year at COF, okay. and we'll okay. talk about it, right? So at COF, uh, we went two and nine. Mm. Um, one of the teams that we beat, one of the teams that we beat was the Reigning Sports Academy. We beat them pretty good. And when everything was clicking, our uh, one of our last games, when we got everything clicking, everybody's together, because it is hard to put a football team together. I, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Uh, we beat Brother Rice, a perennial state champion in Michigan. You know what I mean? So we lost to uh, North Allegheny by, I think, a touchdown or two. You know, And so that was a successful season, season one, as far as the football record goes. Right? So that year, did you have online courses at that time working? Correct. Okay. So let's move forward to Bishop Sycamore. Right. So after the church pulled out, um, I was like, hey, I'm not going to do anything about this. Like, I don't. You know, conversations again that we've had, I was like, I'm done with this. I don't really care about pushing this hard. And there were about 12 students on that on that roster that couldn't go back to their regular school for whatever reason. Okay, you know? stop right there. Stop right there. So you, you mentioned there was 12 students. Again, mm -hmm. you, you, your goal... Your goal at this time is to help the kids, correct? Of course. That's, that's, always, been, that's always been the uh, the point of this, right, is to help kids, right? So you're looking at this and it's, you know, it's easy to look at it from a HBO documentary and say, hey, this, this, this and that. All right. You're going to get the disgruntled kids, and disgruntled parents and put them on. They're not going to get the kids from COF that are like, hey, this was great. I did this. I went to college. Roy did this. Roy did that. So the goal was always to help young men, period, point blank, okay. or provide a better situation than they were in, which is why that fifth year comes in because you got a lot of guys that are on that bubble. Right. right. So, okay. And so now you you at you at Bishop Sycamore, yes, right? Sir. You bringing kids in in the beginning of the year, mind you. At the beginning of the, of the year, you already know as the head guy, there's no funding, correct? Uh, correct. But I'm assuming you are working on that. Correct. Absolutely. Correct. 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 Yeah. Um, because it was a point in time, y'all were supposed to the students were supposed to stay at Ohio Dominican dorms. Yeah, you definitely on it, man. You know your Come stuff. Come on now. Listen, man. Hey, I'm going to do my research. Listen, man. You're going to tell the Come secret. Come on, man. You're going you to tell hey, the secret. Hey, I knew your 10th grade girlfriend. Stop listen, playing. Listen. <laughs> so, listen. So, I, you, I was, you was. I appreciate you making me a little bit more comfortable. But go ahead. <laughs> but you was, you was working on funding. Right. You always work looking at funding sources, right? Funding sources always coming in. Always. Like, you're going to be looking for that and raising money and stuff like that all the time. But that's one of the things that. You know, even though it was the wrong way to approach it, um, I take pride in because there were avenues to take funding that we just didn't want to take because we weren't sure the realm that we fell in. Right. 
So everybody's like, well, what you did? Everybody thinks we took state funding. Everybody thinks we took money as a charter school. Everybody thinks this, this, and that, or that I charged kids and I didn't. And that's pro- part of the problem, right? In hindsight, should have made them pay five, six, seven, eight hundred a month, and then we would have thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a month. Right? So, Roy, from the football aspect of it, mm-hmm. what did you find? It did you get? Did you get paid from no, the football I never aspect? Made, no, I never made any money. No money. None whatsoever. You know, so that's why when you get that's why when you get these reporters that say Roy Johnson was doing this to fill his pockets with thousands of dollars in cash, that's just not true, right? And that's the that's the unfortunate thing about the media or whatever the case may be. They can suggest something mm-hmm. and allow the reader or to allow the viewer to decide on whether they believe me or not. Whereas for me, you know, as the classic statement that I said, I'm not gonna lie about something you can prove. Right. Which is why you're having a hard time finding any student saying that I gave Roy Johnson ten thousand dollars. Okay. Think about okay. it, because that's 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 the thing I want to ask somebody. Like when I ask all these shit talkers out there, like, yo, you know how much prep schools cost? Like, let's mm-hmm. keep it a gully, right? Mm-hmm. Let's go, let's go, go to Spire, mm-hmm. and ask Spire how much it is to go to one year. Right. Like, forget IMG, right? Because everybody's right. talking about they talking about you talking about the Hercules of. Of high school sports, but let's just talk Spire, right? Right. You've been up to Spire. Let's talk about any of those schools. Like, yeah. let's talk about a prep school that is there. Just how much is it to go? And uh, one dude that was on Facebook, he pulled my coattail, and 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 I respect what he said. He said, "But you, the head coach, you got to make sure that you got the bread to do it." Mm-hmm. And that's the mistake that I made, right? Okay. So if you want to attack me for something, attack me for the fact that I was like, "I'm gonna put as much money as my I can in here to get us through the first two three weeks." And then ain't no different from being around the way. I'm going to figure out how to make the rest work, right? Okay. And so that's what happened with, like, kids needing money for food, uh, hotels, all that stuff. You, hotels, you kids had at all the, time. You had to hustle yeah, to, to, get all that. to keep it To keep it to going. To keep it afloat. To keep it afloat. And, and at this point, you know, even I said in the documentary, they said, you know, what did you do wrong? What was the first mistake or whatever they were? And I said, the first mistake is when the church pulled out, I should have sent all them home. Okay. And that was the plan. But what happened right there? Because that was huge right there. That was there. right, right. And I knew it, right? Okay. And, and right, and I knew it. And when I went up there, the kids was up there, half of them was like, I ain't got nowhere to go. Okay. And when they said I had nowhere to go, I was like, let's go into fix it mode time, right? Okay. Now you go back in time, I guess that's what it was. Because I was that for my family growing up. Mm-hmm. I was that. Right. Like my parents would come to me, like, "Hey, this situation happened. That situation happened. You know, I'm I'm the fixer, right? And I'm gonna fix that. You know, um, something I'm proud to say of my therapist. He said, um, "You have altruistic behavior far beyond anybody I've ever met, because that's that side of it, right? Right. You know what I mean? Like that's a, you got to be a different type of dude to be like." There's 56 kids up here, and I hate saying that because they wasn't. They was young men. There's 56, you know what I mean, brothers up here, like half of them, literally. Coach, I don't got nowhere to go. You know what I mean? And that touched me. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. You know what I mean? And I'm like, man, I can't, I can't just do that. You know, so I'm gonna do whatever it takes to keep it going. To keep it, to keep it going. So, and, and from that perspective, I don't expect everybody to understand that. And I'm not gonna go in there, and I never slander. Or dog my own people, but I'm not expecting everybody from around the way to understand that. I'm just expecting fathers from a family to understand that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like I wasn't intending to hurt anybody, but let's keep it real. You and hustled, it, yeah, to keep it going. To keep it going. That's the bottom line. Yeah, that's the bottom line. Okay. And that, and that, that's, and listen, that's got me in trouble. Like, I'm not, you no know doubt, what I mean? no doubt. Because the thing is with people, especially when you're dealing with, especially when you're dealing with. <clears throat> And again, I don't like to say entitled people. I don't like to use that word because that word got used too much. You know what I mean? You can throw entitled up there with love, genius, and superstar as far as I'm concerned. Because it's not the entitled people. It's the people that are unexperienced or inexperienced. Excuse me. They inexperienced. They don't so understand that. You know what I mean? So to them, it was just like, you should have just quit. But I'm telling you right now, it's on everything I love. You can call them squads on my phone. We'll put them on the phone right now and ask them, like, yo, what would you have thought if I would have just walked away and left on you? Like, bro, you saved my life. Coach, mm-hmm. you saved my life. And it's not just me, right? It's Mr. Peterson. It's Mr. Hall. It's P-Dub. 
it's all these people, you know what I mean? I'm not going to put you out there too much, but we know what it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, but dudes yeah. was coming like, hey, I know what the church did. I know the situation, Roy. I got a meal today. I got dinner today. I got advice today. You okay. know what I mean? And, and, and those people there supported. So I also felt obligated to them to try to keep this thing going. And then the real mistake came in after that was done. I should have just walked away. COF went two and eleven. We beat something. We did something. Could name, but there was still some kids left behind. So, but but and maybe at that time you step aside, take a year off, and build it. Should have took should have took three years off, four okay. years off. I, I that like I said, I'm not gonna lie about something that we can prove, right? I should have I should have taken some time off, and then you know if they listen to the story, you know Mr. Peterson um, talk came talk to me. Four or five other parents came to talk to me. Six seven eight players came and talked to me. And they was like, yo, we can't do this again without you. Like, we just don't know the ways of doing it. And so, again, people that are um, kids, parents that have kids in there, correct? Correct. That's another misnomer, right? So when you're sitting down and you're talking and and you're having this, um, you're having this conversation with people about who was there, they don't realize that there were parents, uncles, cousins of players that were on the team. Right. And again, remember, when HBO is putting together, and I'm just using HBO as a whole, when they're putting together something, they're putting together something of 40 hours of talking to me and condensing it into an hour, hour, hour and a half. So I don't right. know the context. So was that going obviously on. didn't use everything. Right, no. Because if, you, because if I'm going to tell the story, right, I'm going to tell the story, the church pulled out of it, left us there with nothing, there were players on the team and parents that supported it, put it through here, and we put 40 people in college. Now, tell what I did, okay. right? Because the reality of it is the difference between being Robin Hood and not being Robin Hood is that Robin Hood was giving money back to the poor, and if you do another Robin Hood, and he wasn't. Right. So there's that. But I don't want to be dismissive of the things that I did wrong. For sure. Because if, you, if you're dismissive of that, it's now not taking accountability for what you did. And I don't want to do that. So, right? so, so, Roy, with you doing what you did wrong, correct? Was that necessary to do to keep, keep this afloat? Of course. Otherwise, guess what? It wouldn't have been there. It right? wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. So you, 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 you had to have the unpaid bills, the un, the the hustling on the paintball place. You had to have that because you got to keep. We're gonna set the, the we're gonna set the record straight with that. Set pump, it straight. We're gonna set the straight with that stupid paintball bullshit. Okay. Okay. I didn't set up the paintball shit. I didn't set it up. Okay. It was set up for a youth group. And then when we went down there, we went and did the paintball and called it a day. So I'm getting ready to leave. He's like, hey. He was like, the youth group that set this up for you guys to come out here didn't pay. My man, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not about to take a bunch of kids to go paintball. The paintball way down here. We was way up in Delaware. It didn't even make sense. It cost me too much money to take the bus down there anyway. And so I was like, this is what I'll do. He was like, we have to have some payment. I said, look, you can take this debit card, hold it. That's all I got. I don't have my license on me. I was like, hold this debit card, and I'm going to figure out what's going on. I'll make a call, too. So we called back and forth. He's calling. We're calling. Can't figure it out. My man, who's, uh, he don't want his name mentioned, but my man's was, uh, who's on the crest of Bishop Sycamore, said, yo, look. He said, I'm going to go down and talk to homeboy, and we're actually going to have a business field trip down there. I'll take down there, and we'll bring him some bread, and everything will be cool, right? Because this way, I'm bringing you business. I'm coming. I'm going to pay. And he went down there, hung out, paid, and everything was all cool, right? Right. But that actual bill that he's claiming, the right. paintball, never got paid, right? Yeah, but I didn't. But it wasn't your. You saying it wasn't your bill? It wasn't my bill anyway. But even still, I still called my people. It was like, yo, can we look out for this dude and everything else? You know what I'm saying? Okay. But then again, like I said, the street walk ain't for everybody, right? Shout out to my father because he used to say, tell me that all the time growing up in New York. He used to for real. He'd be like, son, you know I did sidewalks. I'm like, no, sir. He said because the streets ain't for everybody. Hmm. And just being thinking, I'm like, okay, let's let's exchange mm -hmm. what's going on because I got real problems, right? So, so let me ask you this, because I, I, I know what people are saying when I leave here. What'd you ask him? What, what, what'd he say? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not so, running from nothing. Right. I know. I know. Roy, would you send your son to Bishop Sycamore? That's an unfair question, and you know it. 
Okay, well, why is it unfair? Because my son ain't about to play football. He's about to learn to shoot like you, man. What you mean? <laughs> <laughs> my son is shooting the basketball, bro. Like, that is an unfair question. If Bishop Sycamore had a basketball team, because let's really talk about it, Benji. Like, the, the, the reality of it is, and I don't want to drag you into it, the reality of it is we, sh- we were going to start with the basketball, which if I would have listened to you is that. And that's what yeah, people yeah, yeah. don't understand. People don't even understand that. They say things that, the things that I did were revolutionary to what's going on if I had funding and backing to do right. it. And somebody's going to realize that one day and try it themselves or give us the bread. Either yeah. way, the reason they had articles about there was two guys from uh, France and a guy from um, Croatia that played on uh, Bishop Sycamore. And they really don't realize that that's from you. Okay. Whether you take the blame or not because okay. of your mans who mm-hmm. was sending us all the players. And he put us in touch with the guys that were doing football coaching there and on and on. And, that, okay. and that's what had the network there. So having guys from overseas was a big deal too. So mm-hmm. we were doing a lot of things that were just ahead of our time. I just didn't have the funding. So for somebody who's a hustler, so for somebody who's out there and understands like, yo, we make things shake. Right. Like that's what I was trying to do, make things shake. And along the way of making things shake, young men went to college. And that was the point of it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So there's the big things that you know I'm talking about. And besides, like I tell everybody else, you know, if you were so faulted or if I was so faulted or things that I did was wrong as far as my intent, then why get on Twitter and Facebook and talk about me instead of cutting a check or starting a program of your own? Mm-hmm. Like these kids are still out here. And I don't even I don't even get that's the problem with the with the film, the documentary. What I did was wrong, but the exposure of these kids that are around that are still walking around. Mm-hmm. That need that need that need that need it. Everybody knows that Columbus need, you know what I'm saying, right. some type of prep school. Like, let's right. I'm not even gonna get in an argument with people about this. Right, like, right, right. This right. ain't my town, this is y'all town. Well, but I look it, at it and, it and I'm looking at like the talent in here, like let's be for real. And I'm not just talking about football. Mm-hmm. Let's not even start getting mm-hmm. into basketball, mm-hmm. boxing. Mm-hmm. And if somebody would start a Jackie Robinson program, the baseball players that could come out of here, mm-hmm. you see them on the field. You see these wide receivers and mm-hmm. these guys playing safety. Right. They could roam central uh, center field better than anybody right. else. Well, and that's what people were saying. Like, it didn't represent um, Ohio football, if you will. Nah, it, Mind re- you, I, nah, nah. It, represented, it represented Ohio football. And this is what I would say. Listen, we can talk about this, too. Let me ask you something, man. I lost to IMG 58-0, to zero, correct? Correct. With no funding. Mm-hmm. Just me and a couple of guys that I knew, a couple parents, and a football team. LaSalle, who is a multi perennial state champion, lost to them 58 7. Mm. So, what you saying? Right. So, I lost to them the same score as the state champion. Look at the rankings. The rankings are done by computers. Mm-hmm. They ain't done by people, they're right. done by computers. Look where, look where I ranked competing against these teams week in and week out, week in and week out. With no funding and no nothing. But my thing is, yo, if you could do better, son, go do it. Right. Why not? Why hasn't anybody else done it? Right. So like I said, if you talk to the people that were successful, the people, the successful stories and all that, you're going to get one side of it. If you want to just sit up here and talk about everything I did wrong, I'm more than willing to do that because I made a lot of mistakes. Right. You know what I mean? And people think because I'm passionate about it or because I'm not up here crying every day about it that... You don't care. That I don't care, that I'm not sorry... When right. that's far from the truth. Right. Well, see, and, and, and to be honest with you, I bought you on this show, not for you. I bought you on this show for parents that have kids coming through. That's getting ready to make this decision. Do I go to a Bishop Sycamore? Do I go to, you know, Centennial? Do I go to these schools? How do I know what school to go to if I have a talented kid? Yeah, so that's another conversation that you have, right? So here's the thing. If you don't want Bishop Sycamore to exist as parents... I'm going to tell you, you, there's three things you could do. Number one, know the NCAA rules inside and out and making sure you got your credits before that seventh semester. And I'm not going to tell you that everybody on my team didn't have that. Right. So that's that. But they don't even know what that means, and I'm not going to get into it. You should look right. that up. Right. So you should, your son, daughter, sophomore year. Yeah. You, sure. should, you should know what your credits is at, where no you doubt. at, and all that, right? No doubt. Yeah. You should know where that's at. Yeah. You should understand all those rules. So, so with, with even, even in the academic piece, where where did that fall through at? Being online, um, because I think Roy, and this is just me thinking back. You know the answer. This is just me thinking thinking um, because I, I was in the coaching. You know, of course, different sport. 
So I know what it what it takes to first of all, we, we have young kids or young men that we have to mold, right? That that was that was our job, right? Right, right. We can't have like somebody that's not doing a kid right because the whole community gonna jump on you. Correct. As right? they should at, as they should. Okay. So where did it go wrong with the academic piece? Because it's a second part of my question. Where mm-hmm. did it go wrong? Second, even what went what happened, all of this that happened, I think if you would have had, if they would have at least got credits to go just move on after the season of Bishop Sycamore, I don't think it would have been as bad. That's because, a great question. That's a great question. Right? right? That's so, a great question. So, so explain so, that. So the answer is they got credits. They took an online course. Okay. See, people don't understand NCNT schools, home schools. This is how it works. Remember, most of the guys that I had were fifth year. So these guys had already graduated. So that's like that's the part of the film that's a little bit off, right? They say graduate zero, graduate zero, graduate zero. Well, most of my team was postgrads. They already had graduated. They from just, high school. From high school. So they can't come to my school and graduate anyway. Okay. So there's that. Right. But the, the people that were there, you know, the quarterback that's coming back this year, these guys went on to other schools and their credits transferred. These guys also went on to colleges to play. So if I, they didn't get credits with us. How did they do that? It's a very simple answer to that. It's because they did. You just don't understand homeschool. If you, if you homeschool, right, you homes, for, for instance, let's say Trey the Third comes along. Let, excuse me. Let's just say a kid comes along. <laughs> you're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah, no, no, he's, he's my guy. I can't have him mad at me. <laughs> so what I'm saying is let's just say you decide – to homeschool. Okay. When you decide to homeschool, you get a third party program. When you're homeschooled, you don't get homeschooled by your mom. Your mom does not come in and say, today we're going to learn Pythagorean's theorem, A squared, B squared. We're not 9.8 meters per second squared. She's not coming in teaching you physics. Right. She gets a Ohio Department of Education approved curriculum and then she administers it, right? Mm-hmm. She's the administrator. Right. That's what happens. Right. Okay. Right. So if you're homeschooled the whole time, when you graduate, where do you graduate from? You graduate from the curriculum that your parents administer. But it's not attached to a body of a school. No, of course not. What, what, what school would it be to? Now, it can say administered by whatever homeschool, my, my homeschool, my mom. My, you put down the administrator. That's what you put down. So when people were saying, oh, nobody graduated from Bishop Sycamore. Well, yeah, and technically speaking, they didn't. But they attended Bishop Sycamore as a homeschool and used whatever we used as the online program. Okay. If that wasn't the case, then we wouldn't have kids going to top-notch schools, right? We have a student that goes to John Carroll. Look on the website, Bishop Sycamore. We had a hey, school going to AB. Look at that, Bishop Sycamore. All right. Why is that, right? Nobody's asking where Tim Tebow graduated from because right. he went to a home school. Right. So if you don't understand the law, right? No doubt. That's why it's like that, right? So people that are just watching are like, yeah, I'm, I get it. Y'all just watching Facebook and Twitter, and I'm not expecting you to have a degree in how the education works. I'm not expecting that. I'm expecting you to have a degree in Facebook and Twitter because that's what you're clicking on. But if I all of a sudden shorted everybody on education, they made it loud and clear, right? And, and I tell people, look at the investigation. Read what it says. It says, unless the laws change, there's nothing prohibiting from right. Bishop Sycamore to function. So what does that tell you? No, I, I don't think I don't think people are, are questioning that. I think the issue with with the academic piece is, and it, and it ties into also the age thing. So people, we wanted to know, you know, the kid that played college that played for you, the kid mm-hmm. that was maybe over eighteen. Mm-hmm. You're not under OSHA. We get it. Yep. But when you play a school in Ohio, you got to abide by OSHA rules, correct? OSHA rules says that the school has the discretion to play interscholastic schools as they see fit. So if they want to play a club team and the club team have those ages on that, that team has a right to say no. That's just a fact, whether you're looking at in club hockey or whatever the case may be, right? Oh, he went to JUCO. Yeah, our school didn't start to August. He went to JUCO and got kicked back, had nowhere to go, and then he played with us. And he was under 19. That's why he's playing. But that's no big deal. I want to ask you something basketball, right? So Spire plays high school teams. We all know that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how did LaMelo go play pro in Lithuania and come back and play? Mm-hmm. So you telling me that my kid, you got a problem with my kid going to JUCO and being there a couple weeks and coming back and play, but LaMelo could go overseas and play with grown men in a pro league, right. make a couple million dollars and come back and play high school? Right. Play like, stop. I wasn't, I wasn't the first one to do it. Yeah. I was just G enough to put it on TV. 
Mm-hmm. And that's the difference, and people don't understand that. They don't have to. Like I said, you can think what you want. Right. You know what I mean? Like, this has been a real grass cutting situation. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm telling you, like, my father used to say, You know, I cut the grass so much. I'm like, no, dad. He was like, So I can see the snakes. Like, this has been a grass cutting situation. Like, people that know me, like, I did an interview and I talked to uh, this guy that, anyway, the point is, I'm talking to him, and he says, I said to him, I said, Does it matter that we put 40 people in college? No. So, wait a minute, what you mean it doesn't matter? Does it matter that I got dudes that's online saying, like, bruh, keep going. Like, this was good. Like, right. you know what I mean? Right, there's, right. A dude, there's a dude around the way. His name is Calvin, right? It's my favorite story to tell. And he tells me not to tell it too much because he want to tell it. But he was about to go to college, part of our program. They run up in the crib and they shoot him. He's in a wheelchair. Mm. Now, he got a reason to hate me. Because I should have sent him out early. Mm-hmm. He's the reason that... He should have been on HBO. Mm-hmm. When they talked to the dude, know what he said? What? He said, from this wheelchair, I stand behind Coach Roy. And I'm not even going to talk about it too much because it's going to make me want to cry because I look at him mm-hmm. and I'm like, yeah, bro, I get it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm not, I'm, not here, I'm not here to defend what I did wrong. I'm here to defend why I did it. Right. And I'm going to take that all day. Like, yeah, and guess what? The mistakes that I made, I'm going to grow from. I'm going to learn from. We're going to be better. Right. But... The success we had, Benji, we're going to build on that. Right. And then for all those that died along the way, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not going to let that be in vain. Right. No you know doubt. what I mean? Like, they talk shit about we had bad food and we had all that. The two people that were cooking for, the people who said that, like, and I'll say this loud and clear, the two people who said that ignorant shit, the one woman that was cook, cooking for them every day had cancer. The other one had a heart issue and died. Mm. And the same niggas out here on there talking like, Oh, we miss you. We love you. And da 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 da. Is the same niggas over here talking about how could you do that? Like, bro, you ain't. You're not smacking me in the face. Yeah. You saying something about the people who gave the little bit of time they had left on this planet. One person specifically had time left with the planet. She took that time and made sure that there was other people eating. So I'm just not gonna let people run over that, or you know, walk past that situation either. But again, I want to say this, and I'm gonna keep saying this over and over again, because people won't let you live down wrong. Mm-hmm. So they're like, oh, you minimizing, you minimizing, you minimizing, you dismiss well, it. And I, I, I'm not, I don't want to do that. So that's what I'm saying. We could talk about yeah. what I did wrong all day. I, I think, I think the biggest issue of people's issue was the documentary showed an hour of what your vision was. Right. right? The last thirty minutes is what did fucked up. Right. Excuse me, so, Auntie. I know so you're watching. The, so, so those last thirty minutes. Right. They supposed to. It's supposed to. It's supposed to. It's supposed to do that to people. I get it, but the other. I'm expecting people to be smart enough to be like, all right, now let's do some research. Then no, nobody's doing research. Yeah, nobody's gonna do that. Clearly, bro. right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Shit, I, yeah, bro. Hey, 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 you got I forgot what you said in the documentary, but I was gonna throw a brick at you. I was like, bro, I was what like, I dude, say, I you said you? some shit. Man, what did you I said say? something, Roy. So so let, let me let me go back because I don't want to get off track. Um, right. All right, so we 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 now we 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 address the the academic piece, right? Mm-hmm. All right, so the academic the, the academic program that we used, which is now the official academic online program of the Ohio Department of Education. Mm. You guys are welcome, right? <laughs> like, come talk, like that's what I'm saying. Come talk, like every, that, that's why I wish everybody can get on there and talk. Like, bro, I tell people all the time, yo. Send me a message on Twitter. Send me a message on Facebook, and I can give you an answer to why we did what we did as far as education is concerned. And I want to so make this loud and clear, too, and what we're going to do differently this time around. So your program, I've I seen the vision before everybody came. Uh, uh, Branham. I, I was there hold before. On, the, hold on. Hold on. Hold okay, on. Hold okay. on. Hold on. Hold I'm, on. I'm just saying, I was there this before that. This sucker ass nigga. I want to make this clear. Branham ain't found nothing. He ain't co-found shit. He was not in the beginning of okay, anything. Okay. So there's See, that. I was gone. Well, we, we, when Branham was there, I, was, I wasn't around. I, I didn't see Branham when he came. I think we were already gone um, before the kids and Branham and stuff came. So what my, my point was, um, when, when after the academic piece, we, we, we addressed that. What I want to ask you is, you agree that you should have pulled out when, oh, yeah. when the finances left. But again, you saying you fighting, looking at kids and family, and they don't have nowhere to go, and now you sending them places 
back to their hood to where they don't they can't there's nothing they can do there. They, right. They 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 gonna be stick up kids or they they have the potential to be you know a criminal. Where if you kept them, your situation is better than what you get ready to send them to. Yeah, out of 100 kids, if you say 20 of them could go back to a better situation, another 20 of them would be okay. You have 60 of them sit over there that the best thing that happened to them is for them to come rock with us. Okay. And those are the ones that I was fighting for. Okay. You know, so the other ones that might come out and say, you know, I had this opportunity, I had that opportunity. I look at them all the time and I said it on the videos. Like, yo, we bought you a year. Now, that doesn't mean as much to people that it means to you and me. Right. Because when you and me, when we say, man, I bought you a year, you like, yeah, I get it. Because a lot of these kids was just going to go to JUCO because that's what they're told to go to JUCO and they can't afford to be there. They're developmentally not there, so should be there. And a year, another year of playing and another year of ability to go to camp is a big, big deal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Forget, say, let's say you're not a blue chipper, right? Mm-hmm. You're right on the bubble. And you a senior. Somebody comes to you senior year and says, yo, you can bump up PG and play with us and play high school another year. You would be a fool not to take it if you don't have any offers simply because you can go back to camp Mm -hmm. another year in the spring. And that's what a lot of kids were taking advantage of, the fact that they can come through the summer. And they still do. And they still right. And they still do, right? So in the in the in the documentary, it didn't tell you that we went from literally Youngstown State all the way down to the University of Houston. And on the trip, I tell them all the time, we're going to visit three national champions. So if you talk to the kids that got offers on that trip, they would tell you a completely different story. They was like, you know, Coach Roy, man, he like he liked the whatever of high school football because literally the part of it that you're right, crazy, right? I will walk up to a Dabo Sweeney. Mm-hmm. I will walk up to a Coach Day. Yo, this kid need to be seen. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the things that they didn't bring up. We took the camp tour. Okay. And we took the camp tour. Again, I don't want to drag you in this. We took the camp tour because when I was asking you about basketball, you was like, the thing about football is they don't got AAU. Mm-hmm. Y'all AAU is camps. Mm-hmm. Now, bro, think about how long my family been playing football and it took a hooper, which I hate to say this, but it did take a hooper to, mm-hmm. to click that in my head. Mm-hmm. So that's what we did. So what they didn't tell is that we got on a bus. It was paid for. Traveled around to hotels. They were paid for, too. The kids ate for six weeks on the road. That was paid for, too. And we went, I tell them, every year we do this, we're going to visit three national championships. We went to Youngstown State twice, Clemson, Cincinnati, West Virginia. Went all the way down, stopped at Clemson, went to Clemson's camp, then went to Georgia camp. Okay. Then went all the way down to SMU, and then stopped at camps in between. And then I took kids from neighborhoods and gave them a chance to be on that platform. Y'all have footage of that? Yeah, we have footage of that. So did they. The kids put it up. I mean, the kids put it up. That's what I'm saying. We have footage of that. None of that mattered. They know that. Okay. So they know that. And then if you talk to the kids, like, I got an offer from Auburn. I got an offer from here. They got pictures with the coaches from Clemson. They got the videos. Everybody has it. Everybody knows that. You know what I mean? But that's not what was talked about in the documentary. Well, that don't sell. Because that doesn't sell. And guess what? That's not what they was talking about in the documentary. They was talking about what I did that was fucked up. They were talking about your hustle. They was talking about the hustle part of it, which is cool, right? So that's what I'm saying. So if you called up a kid and was like, yo, what do you think about Coach Roy? They was like, my high school coach never mm-hmm. took our whole team on a camp tour. Right. They don't do stuff like that. Right. I only know one coach that does that, and I'm not going to bring him into this because I don't, you know what I mean? I don't don't want anybody to think that me and him are friends. We're not. I just know that one of the coaches I looked up to Mm -hmm. when I saw him at Ohio State camp, when we first did this, excuse me, when we first did this, said, um, he said, yeah, after here, we're going to hit West Virginia. And after here, we're going to hit Rutgers. And after there, we're going to go UNC. And after there, and I was like, all summer long, he was like, that's how you get offers. And then you mix that with what you said about, you know, camps being our AAUs, mm-hmm. 707, so on and so forth. Right. And I'm like, okay, so we got a plan. And so that wasn't brought up about the things that I did right. Right. But if you talk about the things that I did wrong, that's what you're going to bring up, right? Right. That's what I'm saying. Because originally when I shot it, I don't think they wanted to keep all of that. In fact, I know they don't because most of that stuff didn't even make it. Right. Right. If we start getting into the nuances of what happened, right? Right. Because right. here's the biggest thing, Right. Coach scammed his way onto ESPN. It's the biggest thing. Right? How? Right. 
What, what, let's what talk did you about do? What, did what, you did I, what did I do? Why can't nobody answer that? You told them you had D1 offers and you didn't. I was like, well, that's easy to figure out. So when that announcer, dumbass, didn't do his homework, said, in none of our databases, we see that any of these kids had offer. Any. I tell everybody, go to 247 Sports. This is what I tell everybody. I don't make you D1. I don't make offers and all that. Mm-hmm. 247 Sports and colleges and rivals do. So I said, go to 247 Sports. Right. Look up Bishop Sycamore. Look up kids that offers. And the kids on the rosters match the offers that were there. So I don't know what to tell you. Dor- and you think ESPN didn't know that? ESPN knew that. And that's the thing. People think ESPN is at fault. Like the people that know the real think that ESPN is at fault. And to be actually honest with you, it's not their fault. It was the announcers. The announcers wasn't shit. Mm-hmm. So the announcers said some bullshit. And then, you know what I'm saying? Here come all the haters, right? Spewed by some... So- Want to so, be right over there. Right. So I didn't see the game. So during that game, you didn't miss did, much. Well, I'm just saying, but did any of your players play good enough to get a look? That's what we talked about. In that right? game. You want to hear something that's crazy about that? One of our receivers was on the bubble at Syracuse. They wasn't sure. They saw him five or six times run off their DB. And guess what? He got that offer September 1st. We played that IMG game. My receiver got an offer. Presto, what I did work. Tired of talking about it. Okay. That's a fact. Like, there's not, no, you no, can no, look no, it up. No, no. You know what I'm saying? You can look yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fact, right? So, even if everybody said, even if everybody said, now get in, I always use an example, right? Like I said, I'm not the one to use the scripture, but I'm going to use a story. It's not about the 99 sheep, it's about the one. So, yeah, you're right. I lost, there's some kids that I lost along the way. Right. There's some kids that got hurt along the way. There's some kids that I should have done better. Right. But the reality of it is, this kid was on the bubble, and him just running those deep curls, deep outs, and everything else, and they were like, yo, we could see it. We just had to see it. And if he's doing it against day corners, offer. Okay. So my man's got an offer, D1, after the IMG, after the hate, after the bullshit. Where'd he end up going? Eligibility, right? Gets okay. the offer. He has to go to JUCO. Because he got the offer, but he didn't have the grades. But his grades was, wasn't at fault for me. His grades were bad when they came from high school. Let me ask you another question, man, because people don't understand this. Since everybody out there thinks I'm not about education, because I'm not. I'm about football. Right. I don't do the education. Y'all take your courses online, get these courses, be ready to go. Because most of y'all, it's not going to work. Right. The kids that come to me young don't have a problem. Mm-hmm. So the guys that we got that were true high schoolers. They need, have, they need really fixing. Yeah. I can fix those. The ones that's not, I'm telling them, bro, with the way college football works now, don't take your year and go to JUCO right away. Them kickbacks is serious. Okay. JUCO is complicated now, yeah. even more now than ever. Okay. And I say, you could use this extra year, go to camp, get in front of a coach, get an offer, tell them you got to go to JUCO to get your grades, but at least you're in front of them. Because it's going to be hard to go to JUCO if a kickback from Florida just came in. Mm-hmm. It's going to be hard. But right. if you got a coach looking at you already, you can go to JUCO and call it a day. Well, it seemed like Ju- JUCO would be hard anyway, just anyway. because of the fact of the transfer portal now. It, like I said, the way the game is. I, I win JUCO. Yeah. See, I ended up but going you, Juco. But listen, before, but you get it. before I signed Juco, guess where me and my partner visited? Fourth Union. Yeah. We found out late. Oh, we can play 13th grade and get our, mm-hmm. you know, get our test Great scores test up. Goes up. So and I, people, people I know, know that process. Right. right. And I, so, and that was the issue, right? So that's why I said, I told a lot of them, I was like, yeah, but what y'all don't understand. And like I said, if they was with us the whole time, they were online, they got their grades. And once they graduated, they can go play. But a lot of them didn't. But here's the thing. So now you're going back to addressing the community since they care so much. Mm-hmm. I ask this all the time and people get mad. What GPA do you need to play high school football under Ohio High School Athletic Association? I don't even know right now. The answer is? I think I know. Go ahead. What's the answer? 1-5. Sure. That would, be, that would be a good answer, right? 1-5. Right. You need five credits. So if you're taking six classes and you have... A D, a D, a D, a D, a D, and an F. Your GPA is what? 0.9. And you can play. So if all y'all care about education so much, why aren't you pushing up the GPA for kids to play? Hmm. Okay. Are you really ready to talk? Because if you're ready to talk, come on. Because here's the problem. Y'all didn't study shit. Mm-hmm. Y'all just click, 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 click. So I'm going to keep it real. Why do you think the GPA 1.5? Why do you think your GPA is so low, but you can still play sports? And this is my favorite line for all the people out there that know so damn much. And you think I'm exploiting them. Mm. Who exploiting who? Right. You won't address it. You won't say nothing. Okay. It's the same, bro. It's the same thing I said to people all the time. I'm like, yo, 
Like, brothers kill brothers in the hood, man. Like, somebody shoot up somebody's house, and you're going to go and beef with them and shoot up their house and everything else. But a police officer killed one of y'all. Y'all out with candles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's like, y'all getting on me. When they come to me, they already had the 1.5 GPA. Right. When they come to me, they already had the low grades. <laughs> now we're trying to buy them time. And so for the 30 dudes that are there, for the Josh Bogans that are out there, mm-hmm. he was the uh, big quarterback that went on Haywire. We call him right now, put him on the phone, he pick up. And you ask him, like, I went from nothing, no offers, no nothing, to an offer from UC, Tennessee, so on and so forth. Because it put these kids on a platform for the ability to be seen. And that's what you're, I was trying to do and accomplish. So, so everything turned left when they seen what? Who, as far as? Just, just the community. So, so when they watch your documentary, when do they get mad? When do people get mad? Because your first hour, we seen the vision. Like I said, the last <laughs> thirty minutes, you, 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 you know what I mean. So, you get how you do you get, how do you fix that portion of it? So you get mad and frustrated. You get mad and frustrated when you see hours of me talking and me recutting and getting frustrated too. Mm-hmm. You see that part of it, right? Could you imagine you take a kid in, you make sure he eat, you flying him around to different camp visits and everything else like that. And he get on there and say, yeah, you was beating up your girlfriend every week. Yeah, you was having kids fill out PP loans and all this other stuff. Mm. Mm. Yeah? Okay. What do you say? So now right. I'm like, yeah. So when they ask, like, yo, what do you think about that? Man, fuck that. Yeah. What you mean? I'm still a person too. Y'all dealing this for an hour and a half. I've been dealing with this for four years. Right. So what type of respect do you have to even say? And that's not to even say that, you know what I mean? Like, again, to be dismissive about the things that I did wrong is right. stupid. You know what I mean? Right, right. And the things that I did as far as making mistakes, you know, and then having that. And then what people forget is your words on the internet don't hurt. Mm-hmm. They don't. I don't know you. Right. Those words don't hurt. Right, right. And trust me when I say this, the words that hurt is going to be like, Daddy, what are they talking about? Right. That hurts. Right. So you don't gotta you don't gotta make sure that I right, pay for right. it, right? But you know that's what I'm saying. Because right. I got a son and a daughter that I gotta explain exactly. way more than the domestic violence. I gotta explain why that was even happening. So y'all don't have to worry about that. Right. I'm gonna get mine. Right. Yeah. So you don't you don't have to you don't have to worry about we need to make sure this or we need to sell him that or he should right. have this. Trust me, I'm 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 gonna get it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just not my time to get it now. And that's the biggest thing that I think people need to understand. That we always win. We always come back. We will come back. I'm going to play another team. I'm going to have that ending for y'all. Right. This time I'm calling out for them to come and support me and the guys that I know that are out there because I need your help. So, because if I don't fix it, Benji, the reality of it is it was all in vain and then I did exploit them. So, so Roy, who, who do you apologize to? Or do you apologize? Do you feel you need to apologize to somebody? Who is that person or who is that, th- those people, if you will? Oh, I can go, th- I can go through that list all day. Okay. Josh okay. Bogan. Okay. I need to apologize I mean, to him. Because, like, you know, even though he went to Juco, I'm like, yo, he in Juco, he fine. I should have kept Josh Bogan with me. He still got to go to Juco. To get, that's how long it's taking him to pull out yeah. his grades. I should have let him live with me. Calvin, out on the west side. You know what I mean? I should have sent him earlier. He wouldn't have been shot. TJ, you know what I mean? He went to Central State, went back to the hood, and he got shot and killed. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, those are the dudes up there. You know, Will, he mm. died. One of our coaches died. Like, these are guys that died believing. And had I had the support, had I had phrased the correct funds and stuff like that, and had we would have been as close to whatever school you guys want to think that we could have been, those guys wouldn't have been killed. So, so, so we wouldn't, I wouldn't have somebody in the wheelchair. And then for all the guys that failed for whatever reasons, mm-hmm. right? To so all those guys that were like, hey, this happened because of this. This happened because of that. This happened because I was in this bad situation. Right. You know, I owe those guys apologize too. You know what I mean? Because again, it goes back to the scripture. It's not the 99, it's the one. Because yeah. let me tell you something. I could scream from the mountaintop. Look at these guys that are all playing college football. Right. And everybody's going to say, well, what about these guys over <laughs> yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. You know For what sure. I mean? Yeah. And, that, and, and guess what? That's okay because I decided to take on this. 
Right. And that's a part of it. And that's why, you know, next time around, which is going to be very, very soon, I'm going to make sure that we address all that. Okay. Next time around, meaning? Yo, I'm... I don't understand. You still building? Yeah. What you thought the calling was over? That's the whole point. I wouldn't have to build if all y'all that got all the ideas would do it. Right, right. You know what I mean? You know what a kid said to me two days ago? Coach, let me know when you're ready because I'm coming. I said, bro, listen, you need to find a prep school and go to a prep school. He said, I did. He said, I got into four prep schools and the cheapest one is $9,000. You know I ain't got that. And I was like... Well, man, let me, let's try to figure something out, man. I was like, I'll make some calls. Maybe some people can. He was like, no. Right. And he told me, he said, all those people are talking shit about you, Coach Roy. He said, they ain't cutting a check. Mm-hmm. He was like, they're not going to. Right. No doubt. He was like, so he was like, who gives a fuck what they say? And coach, like, do what you got to do. And I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, but this time I got to just make sure I got the uh, right pieces in the right place before I do it. And that's one thing that, you know, when you talk about accountability and change, I'm always a A Z. I don't care about B C D E F G. Either. A Z. Crazy plans, right? But this time around, I'm gonna make sure that if somebody falls through the cracks, it's 100 percent because they just didn't want to do it. Right. So even with even with the the financial backing, what could Bishop Sycamore had been? And like I said, let's take this. With, sy- even with the with with the with the with the campus that was being yeah. built. Even with that, man, we could have been, we could have been, and should have been, and would have been, in my opinion, one of the better schools for placing uh, underprivileged young adults into college. In my opinion, and right. you say that as far as that's what I was trying to explain to people. Like when I went to games, I used to tell me, "Oh, stop worrying about the score. I need plays, videos, highlights." Mm-hmm. So uh, my favorite story: <clears throat> two players. They're the Michael Jordan, LeBron James, the Bishop Sycamore. I, um, Josh Bogan, who I was telling you about, he was the viral quarterback, the big kid. Okay. I don't remember seeing him, though. Did they show him? No, nah, they didn't show Why would they show him? That would make me look good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so uh, he said, uh, I said to him, we were going to play San Ignatius. Most of these dudes from Detroit, Cincinnati, they don't know, it's Cleveland, San Ignatius. I said, yo, they the five time national champion, y'all. Right, right. <laughs> they, 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 uh, Coach Kyle is no joke. Like, I was honored to even be on the same field as him. And so I'm in the locker room and I'm talking and Josh is sitting there. He's real quiet. And, um, I think he says a matter of maybe 10 words. And uh, I said, uh, if you guys make a play today and give me some highlights, I promise you everybody's going to be watching. Everybody's watching this game because they should, they should kill us. But, so was this with COF or Bishop Sycamore? No, this is Bishop Sycamore. Okay, all right. And so uh, Josh is walking out the locker room and he says, I got you, coach. But he didn't say much, right? And so I was like, okay, no big deal. He goes out there and plays quarterback. They got a kid from Northwestern, shakes him. Kid goes to Ohio State, runs him over, runs all the way down the field. I said, this Jamar, Jamarcus Russell looking mother bit. <laughs> then he comes up to me. He's like, coach. I'm like, yeah. He was like, I, I need to play some D too. I said, you need to play some defense. At this point, I ain't going to tell him no. You can do whatever you want. And he went and ripped people's heads off. Mm. End of the game. Coach Kyle's being interviewed. Coach Kyle says, man, he said they had a man over there. They said that's an up-and-coming team. So that was like a victory for me to hear that from him. Right. And remember, this is the second time we played him. Because mm-hmm. the first time we played him was at COF. Mm-hmm. This was the second time. Right. And he said that to me, and I was walking away, and he said, Coach, he said, you're making a difference in somebody's life. Keep going. And that was a victory for me for him to say that to me because I shouldn't be on the same field as him. If we're going to keep it real in the football world, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, he's Coach Red or whatever the case may yeah, be. Yeah, like, yeah. Man, that's a bad example. Phil Jackson or somebody, you know what I mean? So for me, you know, I was, I was, I was humbled that he said that, right? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And it gave me a little bit of motivation to go. And then we left that night. I got in the truck with uh, Coach P. I get in the, in the truck and we driving. My phone is blowing up. It's Twitter, ESPN, da 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 da. I open it, and it's highlights of Josh Bogan knocking folks out, and that's when I knew I was like. Then all of a sudden, I'm not gonna say his name because now he's a big time coach, okay. and he played with my brother. He hits me up and he's like, "Yo, who the fuck is that?" I said, "Bruh, 
This is dude that's just walking around the streets of Detroit. And here's the thing. When I got him, he was in Texas. Mm. And he was like, But he wasn't in school. But he wasn't in school. He was just he was just around. I don't even know where JB was. And he was like, he was like, get those clips. We're gonna put them together. He was like, I'm taking it in front of the staff. The day after that, he got UC. Two days later, he got Tennessee. And this was during the whole COVID thing that was going on. So to get think about it, to get an offer during that, mm-hmm. it took that type of exposure. And that was the dream of what it was supposed to be. You know what I mean? And that, okay. like I said, okay. the second time around, third time around, whatever time around you guys want to consider this, we're going to do a lot of things different. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Good stuff. I hope. Good stuff. So, yeah, man, I just wanted to bring you on because, shoo, you know, it was it was rough, bro. Looking at man, it's, it, this, it was this, rough. This this what people this is what people got to understand. Some of it, so so so, not Hollywood, but was some of that. Um, how can I shit paid for TV, if you will? <laughs> <laughs> is that a good analogy? I have no idea if anybody was paid. Or okay, not. I got you. Okay, okay, that makes sense. You I know? Don't know, I can't really, I can't really answer that. Um, I would hope not. Because if you paid somebody to do, especially, I'm not saying the, the the main, I guess what I'm saying in general is if you paid somebody to do something, then that would change the integrity of the film, right? Got you. Okay. So if you paid them to, to, say, something, on, to right? say something, that would change the integrity of the film, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Right. And I'll leave that up for people to decide on whether you know they were or they weren't or mm-hmm. whatever reason they have. But I want you to keep in mind... When you're dealing with um, the disenfranchised or whatever words you want to want to say, when you're dealing with that and they get an opportunity to make a leap or jump forward, they got to take it. So I'm not gonna fault anybody. You know what I mean for exaggerating, whatever the case may be. Something right. that was there. You know what I mean. Okay. Like, like I tell people all the time, my favorite part is sort of like the graduation example I gave you. Right? Yeah. They said no graduates. <laughs> of course, I didn't have any graduates because yeah, right, they graduate right. from the online yeah. program. So that was kind of a loaded thing to say, but you know, my favorite thing to uh bring up is they were like um first of all, the kid who's told the story about the homeless guy wasn't mm. there. And number 2, he was the best dressed homeless guy I've ever seen. He had Nike ACGs, a whole Nike suit, a face mask, a hood. He had a hammer with the axe on so it, a why, bag. So why would they say he was homeless? Exactly. He wasn't homeless, and he was arrested. See, that's what I'm saying. If you tell the story, if you tell the story, like a guy was breaking into cars, he was breaking a bunch of stuff. He left with my wallet, players' wallets, because we were doing our morning run, and he didn't realize that we were running back around. He wouldn't have seen us. It's like four thirty, five in the morning. I used to take him on runs, mm-hmm. and so he bust my windows open, opened the door, and it was in there fidgeting around when we rolled up. Right. And when we rolled up, I gave him. I said, "Gee, I'm telling you right now." Like, and I had to look crazy because I was in front of him, right? Because I'm in front of them. I'm telling them, stop, have a team talk, do their push-ups. And when they do the push-ups, I'm walking up, right? So we run so far, everybody give me 20. Run so far, everybody give me 20. Run so far, everybody give me 20. And so I came around, and when I came around, I said, yo, G, just put this stuff down. You don't want this problems. And by that time, they was done with the push-ups and coming around. So I know he had to look up like, I was like, I promise you, you don't want these, you don't want these problems. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And tell so what, he didn't want to give it back? No, what happened was he started backing up and backing up. I'm like, bro, just give me my stuff and we good. Like, I promise you, like, do your thing, bro. I'm, like, I'm tr- trust me, I'm not trying to call the police. That ain't how I get down. Right, right. And then when he did that, he reached into his bag like he was gonna grab the stuff out, and he pulled out a little hammer that has the axe on the back. At that point, you know, you already know a football yeah. team. Right. It was lights out. So when people say things like, "Why did you have the team attack him?" Y'all act like I was Thanos and I was saying, go get Captain America and shit. Mm-hmm. That's not what happened. Right, right. And sometimes I question when people from our community say that, like, what community are y'all from? Hey, man, we're in an era, and, and I'm not condoning any violence, but we're in an era that everything that comes on social media is true. It's true. Yeah, like, I'm looking at that, but I'm, I'm trying so to... So, that's ask, just social media, let alone a network. You know what I want to do? I want to run, exper- run an experiment. For all those people that said, I can't believe you do that. And wait for them to come outside and bust their car window open and start taking their stuff out <laughs> and see what they do. Right. You know what I mean? Like, come yeah. on, y'all. Like, yeah. And you know what? And then someone asked me in an interview, they said, hey, what did you learn from that? I said, y'all right. 
I need to learn to be better. What I'm going to do is stop all of them. Right. Let this person leave with their stuff and call the police and have them sort it out. That's what I'm going to do next time. Hey, man, but if somebody got your phone, I mean, any everybody, you can take my wallet, you can take my car, but when they take that phone, Bro, it's and, a wrap. And here's the thing. When we go on the morning runs, all they stuff is it's in the car. car. Everything. It's everything. So it wasn't like they were just fighting and getting at this guy because he just took my stuff. Yeah, he took their stuff. He took their stuff, too. So it's like, and I'm looking at them like when the police came, he had all of our cell phones, wallet, money, all of it. Yeah. I'm looking at people like, and then they had some dude get up there like, yeah, they he jumped this gunless guy and I'm just not with that. I was like, this dude, man. <laughs> I was like, oh, you know I was going to throw a jab. I was going to leave it to the dude from Westerville to say something. <laughs> if, if he went to East, Mary Franklin, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. They would have been like, yo, Coach Roy, we re- listen. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, and that's, that's, I guess that's not nice. Maybe y'all should cut that out. But <laughs> <laughs> So listen, so listen, what's next for Roy? What's next? What's um, going on right now? Anything going on that 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 you know that you involved in, or are you just laying low right now, waiting on your next move? Yeah, I'm I'm laying real low. Okay, you know what I mean. Um, I spend a lot of time at home. I spend a lot of time with the family. You know what I mean. I spend mm-hmm. a lot of time uh, trying to fix a lot of things that I did wrong. Okay, okay. And then planning. Like I said, I'm gonna need a few more helmets. I'm gonna need a few more jerseys. <laughs> Uh, Joe Mamone, who was the matchmaker. Uh, in the yeah, he was yeah. on the show, right? He was on the show, with yeah. Joe Mamone. And um, he got games, people calling him for games all the time. Because now people want to watch us play more than anything else. And so I want to make sure that, you know, if I decide to accept that challenge mm-hmm. this time around, I'm going to have all you the questions. You want to have Fundy. Right. First and, that's and a, foremost. Yeah, and, it, and that's the thing. That's the mistake that I made, right? The mistake that I made is that I went into it without funding, right? Mm-hmm. And that's when the hustling comes in. And when you're doing that, you know, I put a lot of people at risk, right? Mm-hmm. So let's end this off on the part that people need to understand. Like, it's fun to joke. It's fun to, you know, do the character on HBO. It's fun. That was real fun. It's fun to, you know, do what you do. But let's talk about the people that I hurt, how I hurt them, and being irresponsible. And I was being irresponsible by looking at, the sum and saying, like, I got you. I know you don't got nothing else, so don't worry about it. Coach Roy will take it for you. Mm-hmm. And that was irresponsible for other people. You know what I mean? You cannot do stuff like that. And that right, that right there is what I learned. You know what I mean? Okay. I'm not, I'm okay. not, I'm not uh, a complete asshole where, you know what I mean, I put myself, but more importantly, my family in that situation. But without a doubt, you know, you have a more focused, a older father, right? Because remember, when this happened, my son was a baby. He was just around. I didn't know nothing about being a dad. You know what I mean? I remember, uh, I don't even know if you remember this. I uh, I called uh, Coach P, and I, then I called you. The first time I had, the first time, you know, I had to yell at him and discipline him. Mm-hmm. It's like, why'd you do that? And when he looked at me like that and started crying, I was like, bro, I'm a terrible dad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was like, yeah. yeah, but you'll get over that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, you'll, yeah. You'll, you'll grow up. And then, so now being a little bit older, you know, as a father, I'm gonna look at that, and uh, so the answer. Yeah, is- I mean, you got to look at even your your son, right? Right. You got to put your son in the positions of these kids that you just had. To answer your question, but that's to answer your question. Until to be honest, right? To answer your question, I wouldn't send him there. Okay. And that's the answer. So that's why it got to be better because that's what it should be, right? right. It got to be. I want to send my son. The school that we do, Bishop Sycamore this year, has to be the program the football program that I would send my son to, mm-hmm. especially after all this. Because keep in mind, the reason I'm reluctant in saying it just like that is because we had a lot of parents involved where their kids did go to the program mm-hmm. and their kids are in college. Mm-hmm. So for their perspective, they're like, nah. Right. You know what I mean? But as far as, you know, like I said, we're not going to let the one, the few fall through the cracks anymore. That's not going to yeah. happen on my watch. Right. And that's why, you know, like I said, I bought you on this show because – me and my wife always talk about our journey. Not Our journey might not work for the next mom and dad or whatever, right. but our journey was we, was, we, we dug in. We, we figured out what was best for each of our two kids that play college sports. And we, we dug in the right high school. We dug in the right college. Is there a point guard there? Is there three point guards there? Well, yeah, they ain't going there. So now, you, you see what yeah, I'm saying? But so you, we, yeah, but see, here's the thing. The conversation you getting into – is the problem with um, a lot of communities. And I'm not saying that 
black, white, green, purple, blue. Right. It's a lot of a lot of communities because there's a lot of rural white communities you can go through yeah. and they got those problems and there's a lot of black communities. Yeah. That's just people in general. So I'm not going to label a specific group. But the ability that you guys have, like a lot of parents don't get involved. I'm right. telling you, because if enough no. parents were involved, OSHA's GPA would be 2.5. Well, and, and that's that's why my wife has an event that she does called Mom Knows Best, where she brings in uh, professional NBA moms, and they have a panel discussion with the parents that you're coaching. They don't understand the process, whether it's right. coming from middle school to high school, high school whether right. it's coming high school to, you know, post-grad. Right. You know, hey, your kid needs to go to post-grad. He's right there. But right. if he go to post-grad, he'll be in the Big Ten. If he don't, yeah. he might be in Northern Illinois. Right. So... You, you know what I mean? That's what we we talk about. Yeah, because and, those are the, those are the deeper. Like, bro, like when you talk about reclassing and everything else, like I'm looking at some parents, like and meeting parents, and they, you know, the parents that still right. call me and talk to me, and I'm like, I'm still learning about your oh, son is in eighth grade and he's and and he's twelve. Uh, he need to do eighth grade again, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I mean? well, it, I, a I lot. think I There's think so. I understand it. reclassing that way. Uh -huh. Why would kids like a, and we won't mention names, like a kid at Ohio State, skip his senior year to go to Ohio State? Why would you skip, even though you're physically, physically ready? So I, I, I mean, that's I, my I, don't understand, I don't understand the yeah. method in that, and maybe somebody could help me with that. So here's what I'm thinking. It's the same thing that you're saying, but just in reverse. So peep game, right? My son's a junior. He's the number one safety in the country. Mm-hmm. The number one and number two safety at Ohio State both went to the league. Okay. They got a freshman and sophomore. Well, it's almost there. like timing. Yeah, it's a timing His thing. Timing yeah, it's is timing. now. You can't now, wait yeah, another year. Yeah, because next year, if you're looking behind them, like, bro, they recruiting two five stars out of Florida and this, 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 that. And let's be real, he got better ball skills than you and everything else because a lot of it has to do okay. with timing, in my opinion, because I never, a, I, I never asked them. That's a I'm heck of a business decision. That it is. Whew, you got to be. You got to know. No, that conversation. You you sitting down with the head coach like, hey, bro. but the kid, yeah. the kid for him, it's right for him. It's right for him. That, that we ain't. talking about. Yeah. But but other kids, it might not be right for. But but still, they're trying to get to that timing because it's there. Yeah, he now, was that it, kid he, at Ohio no, 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 State. No, is he was ready. He was ready. Let me tell you. Super something. ready. Let me tell you something. I've super ready. And we're getting deep into football now. I've seen two kids in all the, and think about it, we played against IMG and all the best schools. I've seen two kids cover the smash concept by themselves. He's one of them, and Joey Porter's son is the other one from North Allegheny. Because we ran a, a smash concept him on the back, and I said, yo, make this dude choose. Mm -hmm. Make him choose. And they're far away enough that he can't. He can't come up here and then come up and play on it. There's no uh -huh. way. Right. And them the only two dudes in high school that I seen. So I knew he was ready. Okay. Yeah. When he left pick, okay. I was like, I looked, I was like, hey, yo, oh, daddy. He's showing hey, it hey, 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 I said, hey, yo, daddy was a dog. You is a dog. Yo, brother. Yeah, yeah. You shoot, you was probably ready in 10th grade. Nah, okay. nah. <laughs> I had to understand that because, you know, in the in the basketball world. You know, back in the day, they would reclass because a kid, um, and not quite ready, but he's developed already. Yeah. But still, two years, he's still that size. He's still that size. And right, so, right, right, yeah, right. he might have dominated seventh, eighth grade, ninth grade, but he, you reclassed him. He's an older, he's an older freshman who, you know what I mean? It, it doesn't work. Um, all the time in, in basketball, and and dads were doing it for the wrong reasons, you know, to okay. get some shine early. To get some shine, yeah, <laughs> you know, and not looking long term. Yeah, not looking long term. So, in, in, in basketball, and here's the funny, and you know, me and you could talk sports all day. Someone's trying to shut me up. Let me know. Basketball. After being under you for a while, I understand basketball way differently than I did before. Because growing up in New York, everybody was a Hoover. Right? Yeah. So you get to you go to Rucker Park and see all the Hoovers in the world. But then starting to learn about sports and learning about footwork and all this other stuff mm -hmm. and watching basketball players. Now, football players are the best athletes in the world. I'm not going to argue that. Mm -hmm. But as far as skill set, mm -hmm. like to watch a basketball player dribble and do the dribbling drills and watching their feet and everything right, else, right, that, right. bro, that's like a, bro, that's an art. Like yeah. that's something, you know what I mean? You know my, you know, so I'm going to tell you this story. I promise you. This is it. You know what I'm going to tell right, the story. I'm right. over here. I was watching, they were talking about AI dribbled on um, rocks and everything else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Stones. And mm -hmm. I actually started watching videos of him just dribbling mm -hmm. and just going. 
And I'm like, doggone. So when I saw Homeboy had the fam jersey on, that's what I had to go. Because said, bro, did you see that? Yeah, 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 yeah. You called yeah, it. So, yeah. yeah, so that's yeah. crazy. But yo, Benji, I appreciate you. I know yeah, I'm running up yeah. your time. Nah, nah. We're going we gonna to do this again. Uh, but uh, we we got more. We got yeah, more. So, so and I know you're busy. Bef- no, nah, two before more you. No, nah, I'm not too busy for you, bro. You yeah, know, like, yeah, two yeah, more yeah. series or whatever. So, yeah, we, we'll do it and, uh, and we'll knock it out from there. All right, my All man. Right, I appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir.